was built, it had what, some of the most modern equipment that cinemas have worldwide. It was one of the best, best equipped in the cinemas. Even if you're sitting all the way at the back, you can still feel really like close to the performers themselves. I think Capital Cinema in its whole uh, entirety as a building, as the history, uh, the charm about the place, you know, attracts you to, to want to visit or watch a cinema there. It was built by my grandfather, Muhammad Ali Namazi. A few years after the Second World War, it was sold um, to the Shaw brothers. In the early days, it was a stage as well as a cinema house, right? But uh, as time went on, they did away with the stage productions and it, it entirely became a cinema. I think when it started, there were only two shows a day. When I was a child and we went to the cinema, you had to stand up for God Save the Queen before the movie started. That was how it was, so I can sing that song. My experience with Capital Cinema goes back a long way. I mean, it's, my, it's a memory from my childhood. Uh, it's a place that I had an affinity to because I love going to the cinemas. It was a very expensive thing to bring a whole family to the cinemas. Uh, you know, now you do it every day, you don't even think about it. But at the time it was a treat, you know, and it was something we did together. You go out specially, everyone dressed, and we dressed up to go to the cinemas. Uh, it was not just wearing your jeans and all, we had nice socks and shoes. And, you know, we, we actually had to dress up and when we go out to the cinemas. It had, you know, uh, some nice features, it had zodiac signs, not the Chinese zodiac, but a different sort of zodiac uh, uh, on, the, on the ceiling of the cinema, and I think that's been preserved even today. I think, you know, going there as opposed to somewhere else, uh, really, it has a certain charm in it, of the fact that they retained a lot of the features that my cousin mentioned earlier which other cinemas don't have and uh, are just ordinary yeah. modern structures. When I first found out that the production was going to be held at uh, Capitol Theatre, I was really excited because we were like one of the first productions to start like performing there. It was closed for a while for like renovation and conservation like uh, purposes. I was quite honoured to be like one of the first few to step in and actually perform on it. My film, Seven Letters, was screened there. Uh, so that was actually a, a, a real privilege and an honour to watch it on a big screen with my family present in the audience. I think it was a very proud moment. In Capitol Theatre, there's in, like three levels, right? So it's really not just to the people in front, it's really to people upstairs as well. So your actions have to be a lot bigger. You have to be aware that it's not just all over here, it's all the way up to. I think those who have been to Capitol in the early days I'm sure would want to go back to see it now in the restored condition and I'm sure they'll be very very happy to see what they see because they've done a wonderful job on it, uh, with, 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 with the renovations. I think that if you compare Capital to all the other cinemas in Singapore, it's the one with the longest history, it's probably the nicest one to look at. The other cinemas are simply cinemas in a building, they're not a standalone cinema house in the sense capital is. It's nice to always have something around that you can say that oh it's been around for this long and it's been through this like this different like events of life events and everything along with the performance. It's an icon. I think a lot of people remember it and I think it should be passed on its heritage. It's part of our film culture. Part of our identity.